Let's go explore dairy. Hey adventurers, welcome back to the Planet D on YouTube. Today we're taking you to Derry, also known as London Derry in Northern Ireland. Hello from Northern Ireland! We've been lucky enough to visit Northern Ireland several times and Derry is one of our favourite cities. Located along the Causeway Coastal Route, which stretches from Belfast to Derry, this historic city is not to be missed. We've driven this spectacular 120 mile long route that is famous for its stunning coastlines, massive sea cliffs and some of the most renowned attractions in all of Ireland three times. It's one of the greatest road trips in the world with stops including the Giant's Causeway, the Carricka Reed Rope Bridge, the Dark Hedges and several beautiful beaches and towns. You can watch our entire video of the Causeway Coastal Route in the links below. There are plenty of things to do in Derry, and when visiting Northern Ireland, make sure to spend at least two days here. Nestled along the River Foyle, Derry is one of the longest continuously inhabited places in Ireland. It's a city that's steeped in history and culture with so much to offer. So let's get started. One of the first things you should do is walk along the Derry walls. Most of the major attractions can be seen along here and it's a really pleasant stroll away from all the traffic and crowds. The Derry city walls date back to 1613 and surround the entire old city. The still intact city walls are one of the finest examples of a walled city in all of Europe. It's a 1.5 kilometer walk around the entire inner city with seven gates in total. Take a stroll to see its cannons and beautiful lookout points. A very cool fact is that the walls of Derry have never been breached, which is astounding with all the troubles the city has seen. I highly recommend walking along the Derry walls here at sunset. It's just such a pleasant feeling. Derry was regularly under siege from 1649 to 1689, and during the Troubles, these walls were closed to the general public. Today, visitors can enjoy the 22 restored cannons and beautiful views of the old city and surrounding neighborhoods. The next stop is to take a walk to Free Derry Corner. The name Free Dairy was given to the mainly Catholic areas of Bogside, Craigan, and Brandywell, and no visit to Dairy is complete without a tour of this historic neighborhood. It's very sobering walking through Free Dairy. All of these people were so young fighting for something they believed in. It's just so sad, and I'm glad that we're remembering them. Bogside was the center of the Troubles that began in 1969 during the three-day Battle of the Bogside and continued until 1972. One of the most famous monuments you'll see here is the Bloody Sunday Monument. If you ever wondered what the famous U2 song was about, this is it. Bloody Sunday took place on January 30th, 1972 when British paratroopers opened fire on protesters. 14 civilians were killed that day, and many more were injured. This monument is dedicated to those who died here, where you can pay your respects. As you continue, you'll see several murals known as the Bogside Murals. These murals take you on a visual journey, recounting the conflicts and injustices that took place during the Troubles. One of the most significant murals depicts a young schoolgirl, Annette McGavin, who was only 14 years old when she was gunned down. These murals not only pay tribute to the people of the city of Derry, but other human rights activists like Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., and Mother Teresa. You can take a walking tour here uh, with people who actually survived the area because it's really a, a very recent history. And what we're learning from recent events now is that anything could happen again. So it's really important, I think, to take tours like this 
to remember what can actually happen and to learn from our mistakes. As you walk further, there's another monument dedicated to the hunger strike victims where 10 prisoners starved themselves to death in 1981 during a showdown with Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. One of the victims was Bobby Sand, who was elected as a member of parliament during the strike. To read the stories from these times is truly astounding, and a visit to the memorials and seeing the murals in Derry puts faces to those who suffered. We're here at the oldest building in the city, which is St. Columns Church. No tour of any Irish city would be complete without mentioning its cathedrals. We sauntered into the grounds of St. Columns Cathedral and when inside we had volunteers welcoming us with open arms as they told us the story of the cathedral and pointing out interesting pieces. It's a must-see as it was the first Protestant church built in Britain following the Reformation. It's one of Derry's oldest buildings dating back to 1633, which is saying a lot because it survived the Siege of Derry and the Troubles. Cross the River Foil on the Peace Bridge. Opened in 2011, the Peace Bridge is a pedestrian link spanning the River Foil that connects Ebrington Square and the Waterside area to the city centre. This has brought Derry together, helping to connect the two sides, both geographically and symbolically. There's a lovely waterfront trail that you can walk along and it crosses the bridge so you can go to either side and take in views of the city and just enjoy the park and the outdoors. On a sunny day like today, it's amazing. We had a beautiful view of the Peace Bridge and the River Foil from our hotel room. We stayed at the Maldron Hotel right in the city centre at Butcher's Gate by the Dairy City Walls. This was an excellent place to make a base with all the attractions within easy walking distance. It took us a little while to find it, but we finally found the Craft Village here in Dairy. I think it's worth it. The Craft Village is a lovely alleyway filled with gift shops and boutiques leading to the Village Square in its centre. The Village Square is covered and it's a great place to pull up a seat and have a pint. There's also an unmissable thatched roof cottage in the village that's very picturesque and perfect for your Instagram moments. Our next stop is Guild Hall. This stunning building is an absolute must visit when you're in the city. Completed in 1890, the Neo-Gothic building serves as a civic building housing the offices of Derry City and the Strabane District Council. One of the standout features of Guild Hall is the array of stained glass windows. These beautiful windows depict various events from Derry's history, including the Siege of Derry. The main hall is beautiful with its vaulted ceiling and grand pipe organ. Guild Hall was also where the Bloody Sunday hearings took place from 2000 to 2004 and you can learn all about it at the display on the second floor. Another one of the more popular things to do in Derry is to take the Derry Girls walking tour. This popular TV show is about growing up in Derry in the 1990s, which were the final years of the Troubles. While most of the show was shot in Belfast, many of the exterior scenes were shot in Derry. And don't miss seeing the Derry Girls mural. Once you have seen the main attractions in Derry, there are plenty of museums to visit, including the Siege Museum, the Museum of Free Derry, and the Tower Museum. With so much history, it's worth going inside to learn more about this fascinating destination. Cheers! And these are the best things to do in London Dairy. If you enjoyed our video, make sure to subscribe and click on that bell for notifications because we put up new travel videos each week. See you next time!